This chapter is going to explore the social structures that influence youth and how that social structure's effect may make some youth more prone to delinquency. To a large degree, we'll be looking at environmental factors. The idea of the social structure, this is a fairly broad concept. It could include things like group relationships or social institutions or the norms that are embedded within subcultures. The effects of the social structure can lead to delinquency through the risk factors of child poverty, racial disparity, disorganized communities, and high levels of unemployment. These social issues, which are known as risk factors, are something that we will discuss throughout much of this semester. And while I said earlier that delinquency is a multidisciplined area of study, I'll also state that sociology tends to be the dominant field of study for theories regarding why delinquency occurs. As a bit of a backdrop to all these theories, I want to look at a point in history when the social structure aspect of social problems became popular as a framework for creating public policy. During the 1960s, our country was dealing with tremendous political unrest and high levels of concerns about many different social issues and social problems. The policies of President Johnson's Great Society were to address the most serious of these problems, one of which was poverty. So it's here with the recognition that poverty resulted in many secondary social problems, that the child's life conditions was linked to their behaviors. And we'll discuss the spillover effects of poverty in many different aspects of this course. One does have to wonder if a child never has a safe place to live and play, if they endure the constant stress of moving from one place to another, if they don't have enough to eat, if they have the electricity, the heat, or the water cut off at different times, you have to wonder how that affects their ability to become part of the larger culture and ascribe to the norms and values of society at large. So during the 1960s, the War on Poverty is launched, and that's the first real national effort to address one of the major factors in delinquency. That's not all the war on poverty was meant to address, but it certainly is one of the issues that was considered with the policies when they were designed. In creating this framework of thinking about social structure theories, I want to introduce you to Robert E. Park. He was part of the Chicago School, which was a very influential and perhaps the most singularly influential area of sociological study in the United States during the first half of the 20th century. Robert E. Park created a framework of understanding how the physical environment of urban areas and considered how these environmental issues were and how they had an effect on the local culture and subcultures of different groups. Clifford Shaw and Henry McKay were a part of the Chicago School and they specifically were studying delinquency rates in different parts of the city. What they found were that the rates remained the same over time. This was important because immigration during the 19th century established that different groups moved into different areas at different points in time. The pattern they found in immigration was that once a new ethnic group became established in the country, that group would then have enough of an economic advantage and employment stability to move away from the impoverished area they first moved to. Then a new group would come to that area. What Shaw and McKay found after studying delinquency rates in a certain area over time was that even when the ethnic group moved away from the area and a new group moved in, that the delinquency rate stayed the same. This sparked the idea that the delinquency rates were not a part of the actual group's norms and values, but instead somehow was being influenced by some factors associated with that area of the city, 